Okay, so we'll now turn to morphisms of graphs. Uh, this is a more or less obvious definition, the maps between graphs, except I should clarify here, we don't allow edges to be collapsed. Okay, so suppose we have gamma is gamma of uh, EV, and we have say gamma prime, which has uh, gamma prime of uh, EV, E prime and V prime. So we're going to abuse notation a lot because that's a choice between that and a proliferation of notation. The latter is more confusing. So a morphism, so a morphism, this is just phi from gamma uh, to gamma prime is a bunch of maps which we'll call all of them phi basically. So phi is phi mapping e to e prime and also phi mapping v to v prime such that the conditions are obvious. Phi of e bar is going to be phi of e bar and also phi of the initial value of e is going to be the initial value. This time it's in the image gamma prime of phi of e. As a consequence, the same relation is true for terminal values. Okay, so this is very fine. Uh, easy to see that if we have such a map, then we get induces uh, mod phi, which maps the geometric realization of gamma to geometric realization of gamma prime. And indeed, we get a functor. So here, its vertices go to the vertices under phi. And then as far as edges are concerned, I'll send an edge e comma s. So this is going to send v to v or if perhaps I should say mod v to mod of phi of v. So this will be the image of the vertex. And if I look at a point e comma uh, not zero one s, well, this will go to, uh, so the image of this gets mapped to phi of e and s. This is the pair that we get. And uh, th you can just check from the quotient topology that this is continuous. And similarly, it's easy to check that if I look at the identity of gamma and take the geometric realization of that, this is basically trivial. This is the identity on the geometric realization of gamma. And also where the appropriate definition makes sense, phi composed with C, if I take the geometric realization, so you get mod phi composed with mod C. So while we won't really use this, we actually have a functor which will take this combinatorial category of graphs with their morphisms to the topological category, okay, which is these things, which is uh, topological spaces. And now what do we need? So well, the nice thing about this is that we have a criterion for when, uh, when our morphism is a covering. So criterion for covering. So let's uh, first observe that if we take V in V, then we have phi, V, we have a map which maps link of V to link of uh, V prime, okay? So phi V is simply phi restricted to the link of V. And this is phi on edges. So edges that start at V go to edges that uh, take go to the link of V. And so what happens is the following. You look at the proposition. So remember a covering is something that has to be a local homeomorphism. Uh, so phi is a covering uh, if, well, first of all, phi must be surjective, surjects on vertices and you can say and edges or you can deduce that from the next condition. Okay, so this will uh, imply subjectivity and uh, for all V in V, let's look at phi V which maps the link of V to link of phi of V. These are links in two different graphs, remember, is a bijection. So combinatorially, it's like a homeomorphism, okay? And this is not hard to prove either. So the point is that we want to see what is the inverse image of these. Okay, so let's define a neighborhood. So let, uh, 
be half or let's take one third of V B so let this be our uh, basic neighborhood given by V union I'm going to stop saying image of so we look at E comma S and S is in uh, 0 1 third so let's make them nice and disjoint and we can make this definition for any graph okay so this is true for v and this we have the same definition for v prime okay so now let's try to see what uh, neighborhoods are evenly covered so any interval in uh, e prime the image cross uh, 0 1 is evenly covered okay because it's inverse image of corresponding intervals in the edges okay and now suppose the hypothesis is true and let's pick v prime in in uh, uh, the image vertices okay then let's look at p inverse of uh, b13 of v v prime okay so this is the ball in gamma prime this is going to be the disjoint union of V in P inverse, uh, I should say P is mod of phi. So this is in phi inverse of V prime. So you look at vertices that map to this of B one third of V. Okay. And further, we can see that on this, so because of this bijection condition, okay, so let's look at uh, phi mod phi restricted to b13 of v well this maps b13 of v to b one third of v prime well this has inverse um, well, I'll call it f or something this is a local ho to show that it's a local homeomorphism we can show that it has a local inverse so if I look at f of v uh, prime is of course just v but f of suppose I take a point e comma s well we have a bijection on uh, phi v phi v which is a bijection so I look at phi v inverse of e this is an edge with initial vertex v prime so, so with v rather okay and s it's easy to see that this is an inverse and so we have a local homeomorphism so this is really very convenient for us this lets us see the so we have a completely combinatorial condition so it's time maybe for a picture what we are, what i'm saying here is that if i have edges here and then i have uh, this is v and this is v prime and i have edges here so i could have two edges collapsing so just because I had three here and three here doesn't mean that it's a bijection these two could go to the same edge so we could have these two going to the same edge and then this one goes so it's neither injective nor subjective but if it is bijective then the local picture here is the same as the local picture here and we are mapping by homeomorphism that is clear and easy to prove what I'm merely saying is that given any point sitting here I look at the corresponding edge there's a unique edge which maps to that uh, in terms of the map on links and send it to the same distance away that is the inverse of these maps okay so we have nice combinatorial criterion for covering the uh, among graph morphisms and this will let us look at a couple of examples so the first one we look at slightly more formally which is we already saw s1 as a graph so r is going to be a graph uh, similar to s1 we can prove homeomorphically with edges v is of simply integers and e is going to be consisting of two sets uh, let's call them e plus union e minus and e plus is going to be the pairs n n plus one n in z and you can presumably guess e minus is going to be the other pairs okay initial vertex is the initial vertex the first guy and bar will take one of these to the other one so this will give me r and s1 if you recall is going to be so the link of any vertex is going to be a pair of edges this one out and this one out and s1 is going to be of course again has uh, 
v has 1 and e is going to be a pair alpha alpha bar and we this actually forces things so the initial value alpha and alpha bar have to be fixed and the initial value has to be uh, 1 there is no other choice the link of this is a pair this way and this way and the link of this is a pair so links map bijectively from this to this oh provided I tell you what the graph morphism is okay and the graph morphism there is actually very little choice we will send phi uh, we will send so phi so e belongs to e plus implies that phi of e is going to be alpha and if e is in e minus phi of e is going to be alpha bar and phi of any vertex n so this is n in the vertex set is 1 there is no choice over there so this is the map here and so this respects e going to e bar and this will give you a covering by the previous criterion that if I took any n here and I took this guy this is a bijection and also we have subjectivity okay and now we look briefly we will look at this example in great detail later um, another graph and this time I'll just draw a picture of it which is that I'll take one vertex and two edges more formally we have four edges so I should say two pairs of edges so here are some covers for this guy so suppose this is alpha and this is beta this is going to be actually the central character in the next part of this course um, which is uh, this wedge of two circles okay but how would I construct covers there's some rather easy ways of doing it one is unfold only alphas so if I look at this and have betas here okay you can formally write down what this means you can have betas here etc so then all of these are alphas and uh, 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 whichever way the way I've drawn the picture maybe all of these are alphas all of these are betas by which I mean the edge this one maps to is beta the edge this one maps to is alpha the vertex there's only one vertex so all vertices go to that the reversed edges do it and here you see that the link has four elements okay which is going outwards this way this way or this way this way and here to the link at any vertex has four elements you can go this way this way horizontally or up and down and they are mapped bijectively it's uh, out in the alpha and alpha bar direction beta and beta bar direction and here you have alpha alpha bar direction beta beta bar direction we'll see this in um, a, a more complicated cover of this but this shows you that it's a covering in fact you can see from the picture directly that uh, if I look at this neighborhood it is homeomorphic to this neighborhood and your obvious projection maps one to the other okay and another one which is maybe uh, also interesting more interesting is that if I look at the grid okay so let's take say a rectangle I don't want just the rectangle but I'm drawing a rectangle it should extend to the whole plane uh, just for the picture to be a bit more regular so if I look at the grid of integers okay I'm drawing just a tiny piece of it we have to con complete the whole integer lattice here okay and I label in such a way that uh, these guys are alpha horizontally and the vertical lines are beta the labeling means this is how the maps are given the vertical edges all go to betas and hence the downward edges go to beta bars and horizontal ones rightwards to alpha and leftwards to beta bar and these integers go here then you can say this is also four valent and the correct four valence that is you have alpha beta alpha bar and beta bar coming out in all directions it follows that this guy is a cover and uh, this is an interesting cover okay so finally we'll cover and um, construct a grander cover but that will be the next segment which will let us actually calculate the fundamental group of this guy x